Hello! Welcome to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video, we start to make this tap guide that fits into the tailstock. It locates on the centre of a tap and guides a tap when tapping a part L in the chuck. The design is based around a spring which you can find in one of these liquid soap dispensers. The spring has a 6mm bore, 8mm OD and is about 25mm long. This is the finished item. It fits into a tailstock holder and this end is spring loaded and locates at the rear of the tap. So let's go into the workshop, see how we make it. This is a bar with a Morse taper on the end. I'm holding it in a number 3 to 2 Morse taper collet. The bar has a number 2 Morse taper. It's just parallel bar. I'll drill the hole in the end. half inch bar that fits okay in there using the 60 degree cut out in a thread gauge so I know the angle of the boring bar is 30 degree that's slightly out on the center because the cutting edge of the tool is not parallel with the boring bar it's always set at a slight angle That's the bore. This holds in the tailstock. Your die stock goes on the end, and then you can thread a bar in the chuck. So what I want to make today is a spring-loaded plunger that will fit. So when you're tapping a hole in the lathe, the plunger will touch the back of this and guide the center. I'm going to make a double-ended plunger so one end will have a center in and the other end will have a cone. So depending on what you've got on the end of your tap, because some taps have a little center drill hole, this tap's got the opposite, it's got the cone on there. So if I do a center drill in one end and a cone on the other, I can turn it around to suit whatever the tap's got on it. So I thought I'd use this, being that it's half done. So all I've done is board it out to half inch, 30 degree angle on the end so it can be held in a centre if needed. That's finished. Uh, if you're making it from scratch you'd have to turn a taper, Morse taper, turn the diameter to I think it's about three quarters, whatever you need. But at the moment I'm just doing the tap guide. Okay, I've turned the OD down and I've just fitted my knurling tool and I want to put a knurl just on the end. the knurl on this end. I want to reduce this diameter to 10 millimeter and then drill a hole through it and then part this off.
down about 13 mil deep in there. I've just polished that up and you can tell it's a, a good fit when you push it down you can see how the air gets trapped in there pushes it back off so that's close enough I've turned it round in the three jaw chub, clocked it up to half a tenth. What I need to do now is face off this end, centre drill it to be able to use a centre to support it. Then I can turn this diameter down, knurl it, and part it off. to watch the the knob here on the jaws. I've set the parting off tool to be about five millimeters from the back face. I can pull this over a bit more. <laughs>
It's running out about a thou. What I've done is, with this three jaw chuck, the centre will pass through the centre of it into the headstock. So I've put a number three Morse taper with a number two Morse taper centre inside the chuck. Rather than take the chuck off, I've put the bush that I made first on a mandrel. The mandrel's a tapered bar. This one's uh, made for grinding. A grinding mandrel will probably have a thou and a half in that length because you're usually locating off a ground bore. A turning mandrel would be maybe two or three thou. And the idea is you put the bore, the bush or the whatever it is you want to turn, put it on the mandrel, push it up until it gets tight, just tap it so it's only held on by friction. And then if I put a carrier on the end, small carrier just locks down on the end of the mandrel. This one should fit inside the chuck jaws. We'll just open the jaws up a little bit more so this will fit in. And hold it between centres. I'm just going to close the duck jaws a little bit till it just touches. A little bit of play in that. Make sure that the jaws are all within the thread because you don't want a jaw coming out. And the run out on that's a thou. So what I will do now is turn that to 10 mil. Now the reason why I'm doing that is I made a mistake on this diameter. This diameter has to fit in the 10 mil hole we've just drilled and I made it to fit in that 13 mil or 12 mil hole which that fits in so that fits into there and this diameter will fit into this 10 mil diameter so now I'm hoping I can turn that set up my layer tool and we'll just see how this goes <laughs> Now with this, because it's between centres, I can take this out, get the bore that it has to fit, that'll go straight through. So I can try the fit before I take it off the mandrel. Give it a slight polish, so that's what it should fit. And 
and then to get that off the mandrel you just hold it underneath tap the mandrel through and we know that the outside and the face is running true to the bore oh well that's it for today we've made three of the four parts to complete the job we'll finish this off in part two thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you next time on enots engineering